Shalom, shalom nekulam. We are back to continue our series on the letters of the alphabet. Uh, there are various uses as prefixes and suffixes. Today we're going to move on to the lamed. And before we actually tackle that, I'm going to show you how to draw a handwriting lamed. Okay. The lamed, the handwriting lamed, looks like this. It starts uh, towards the bottom of the line. It comes down and makes a little loop. And then it comes up on top. It's larger than the other letters. It'll be an oversized letter. For example, here's a bet next to it. So we make a little loop on the bottom and then up above the line. Lamed. If you have learned about the root meanings for the letters, you know that Lamed means an ox code. And this is a rather sturdy piece of equipment. It's a long stick with a metal uh, triangle at one end so you can reach over the ox and prod him between the shoulders to make him go in a direction and as we see the use for the Lamed we're going to see that's kind of related because the uh, principal meaning as a preposition for the Lamed and its only meaning is as a preposition means to go to something towards something so let's go and look at some scripture Shmuel Aleph Perek Yidchet Pasuk Arba, First Samuel eighteen four. Vayit Pashet Yehonatan et Hameil Asher Allah, Vayit Nehu le David, Umadav vaad Chabo vaad Kashto vaad Chagoro. Yeshayahu Yud Pasuk Achadasre, Isaiah ten verse eleven. Hello, ke asher asiti le shamron, vela elileha, ken eese, lirshalayem, vela atzabeha. In the first scripture, we are seeing the scene between David and Jonathan, and they're exchanging um, coats and mantles as part of their uh, vow to each other. So we see that uh, Jonathan took his uh, mantle off of him and he gave it le David to David. It's in a direction and to somebody. This is a normal use we would recognize in English. In this in the second scripture, the eye is talking about what he is going to do by way of punishment. And we see it says, I have done le Shamron, in other words, to Samaria, and le Elileha to her idols. And also, he says, those are the same things I will do, le Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem. You see this uh, vowel function, when you have these prepositions before the yud, when the next letter begin, next word, next letter of the word is a yud, the vowel just shifts to the preposition, and we have no preposition, no vowel under the yud for Yerushalayim. Le Yerushalayim, and also la atzebeha to her idols. So again, it's the same idea as we think of to, going to something or, or towards something. I will do that to them. Breshit Aleph, Pasuk Chamesh, Genesis 1-5 Vayikra Elohim laor yom, v'lachoshech kara laila, v'yihi erev, v'yihi boker, yom echad. Breshit Aleph Pasuk Echadasre Genesis 1 11 Vayomer Elohim Tatshe Haaretz Desha Esef Mazria Zera Etz Pri Ose Pri Lemino Asher Zarovo Al Haaretz Vayihi Chen In some familiar passages from Genesis we see it's a little bit different use, uh, but it is required by the uh, verb and the construction of the sentence. So Elohim calls le or. He doesn't call to the light, but he calls the light yom day. But in Hebrew, we need this preposition. He calls the light day le or. And again, la choshech to the darkness. He's not calling out, oh, darkness. He's, he's saying the darkness will be called night. So that is required by Hebrew grammar. 
Again, these prepositions, there are no one-letter words in Hebrew. They must be attached to the noun. Uh, further down in Genesis, we see that um, Elohim is commanding the earth to bring forth grass, and then he talks about the fruit trees that will make fruit, and we translate that as according to their kind, le mino, according to his kind. So this is a little bit different translation again uh, that we wouldn't recognize in English. It's not to his kind, but according to his kind. Breshit Allah, Pasuk Arba Esre, Genesis 1 14. Bayomer Elohim, Yehim Orot Barakia Hashemayim, Lahavdil ben Hayom or ben Halila, Bahayu la Otot, Ulamo Adim, U Liamim, Be Shanim. Breshit Gimel, Pasuk Shesh, Genesis 3 6. Vitere haisha kitov ha et la maachal, Bechit avahu la enayim, Benechmat ha et la haskil, Vatikach mi perio, Vetochal, Vatiten gam la isha ima viochal. Also in Genesis, as Elohim is creating the lights in the firmament, uh, we see that one of the purposes is to divide between the day and the night. So that to divide there is lehavdil. This is a common usage for the word to that we recognize, we call it the infinitive, to divide. And then he says that these uh, lights in the heavens, and they are going to be four signs, four appointed days, four days. So again, this is the preposition le, and it's not uh, as we would uh, say it in English, but we would translate it for le otot, four signs, le moadim, four appointed times. In the uh, description of the great disobedience, we have uh, the woman is looking at the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which she is not supposed to eat. And she said, she sees that it is good, le ma'achal. Ma'achal is a noun that means uh, food, and again, we would translate it for. She sees that it is good for food. Um, she sees that it is pleasant, la enayim. Then we would say to the eyes. Uh, also, la haskil is an infinitive again to make one wise, which we just need one word in, in Hebrew, la haskil, to make one wise. It's the infinitive form. Amos Chet Pasuk Achadasre Amos 8.11 Vehine yamim ba'im neum Adonai Yehovah Vehishlachti ra'av ba'aret Lo ra'av la lechem Velo tzama la mayim Ki im l'shmoa et divrei Yehovah Tehilim Mizmor Samechtet Pasuk Echad Psalm 69 Verse 1. In this passage from Amos about the latter day famine, we see that it is a famine for bread. Ra'av la lechem. It's not a famine to bread. We can't translate it in English to bread. We have to say it's a famine for bread. There is no bread. And sama a thirst la mayim for water. In this uh, prologue to Psalms. This is very common. We see the Psalm open up, La Minatseach, and that is for the choir director. But we have the same preposition, Le David, and that means that David wrote this Psalm. So even though it says the Lamed in both places, one means for the choir director, the other means that the Psalm is of David, from David. Shia Hashirim Bet Pasuk Sheshesre Song of Songs Chapter 2 Verse 16 Dodi Li Vaanilo Aroe Vashoshanim Bereshit Yud Bet Pasuk Echad Genesis 12 Verse 1 
ויאמר יהבה אל אברהם, לך לך מארצך וממולדתך ומבית אביך אל הארץ אשר אראך. Moving into the preposition, being attached to the personal pronouns, as we have already done for some of the other ones. Um, this very common phrase from the Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs, many of you I'm sure know this. The Lamed used with the personal preposition is also used for the idea of possession. So when we see Dodi Li, that's translated as my beloved is mine. Li literally means to me. In modern Hebrew, it's, uh, it's got another prefix on it, sheli, uh, which means mine. Sefer sheli, my book. But in uh, biblical Hebrew, we just see the li. Dodi, li, that is to me. And ani, lo, that lo, that vav means him. We've already discussed the yud and the vav. Uh, the people that they're attached to. I am his. I belong to him. In Genesis, Yahweh uh, speaks to Avram and, and says, uh, I want you to go take yourself out of here and go someplace else to a land that I will show you. So the phrase there is Lech Lecha, and this is actually the name of one of the Parshas uh, early on in the cycle. And it's very interesting because both lech and lecha look exactly the same if you take the vowels away. You have a lamed and a chafzafit. But the first set, the lech, is a command form and it means go. And then we have the lecha, which is the second person masculine singular, to you. How can we best translate this uh, concept in English? Maybe we can say, Take yourself away from your land and from the land you were born in. Lech lecha. So it is, uh, that's the form for the second person masculine. Lecha to you. Ruth Gimel, Pasuk Echad. Ruth 3, verse 1. Vatomer la naami chamota. Biti, halo avakesh lach manoach asher yitav lach. Shir Hashirim Bet Pasuk Chameshesrei Song of Songs 2.15 Echezu lanu shu'alim, shu'alim ketanim, mechablim karamim, u chramenu smadar. In this piece from Ruth, Naomi is talking to Ruth. So the first uh, prep preposition we see there, la, with the dagish and the hay. Remember we talked about that when we did one of the series of the helpful hay. When you see that dagish and the hay, most often it's going to refer to the third person singular feminine, to her, something to do with belonging to her or being her. So uh, Naomi is talking and she says la to her. Who is she talking to? Ruth. And uh, she says, uh, should I not uh, request for you? And so that is the lach. So lach is the second person feminine singular. The masculine is lacha. The feminine is lach. Um, should I not ask for you rest? In other words, Naomi has figured out that Boaz is a kinsman redeemer, and she is going to pursue the... Uh, the action on Boaz's part to do his part as a kinsman redeemer. And so Naomi is saying to Ruth, look, this is, these are the things that, that I can do, so it will be well with you. Yitavlach, it will go well with you, and you can have this rest. In Peace from the Song of Songs, we see the uh, first person plural for us, that is lanu. Get for us, get hold for us, the Foxes, the little foxes. Lanu. Vayikra Yudzayan Pasuka Chadesre. Leviticus 17.11. Ki nefesh habasar badam hi, va'ani netativ lachem, al hamizbeach, lechafer al nafshotechem, ki hadam hu ba nefesh yechaper. Vreshit. Vav Pasuk Arba, 
Genesis 6, 4. Anifilim hayu ba'aretz bayamim hahem, vogam acharechen, asher yavo upne ha Elohim, el benot ha Adam, vayaldu lahem hema hagiburim asher meolam, anshe hashem. In Leviticus, here is a, a scripture that I'm sure you're familiar with about the uh, life being in the blood. And let me just say that it's, it doesn't say life, but it says nefesh. It's the nefesh which is in the blood, and it is the nefesh that requires atonement. So he always says, I have given it to you. That is, as we say in Georgia, to all y'all. Okay, it's a second person, plural masculine, lachem. I have given it to all y'all. And then we have another lamed in this verse, lechaper, that is an infinitive uh, to make atonement. In the final verse, we touch on the uh, subject of the Nephilim, and it is talking about um, that they uh, took the, for themselves the daughters of men, and they gave birth, was given birth to them, the heroes who are men of renown of the days of old. So the to them that was born to them, that's lahem, which is a masculine form. I think it's a little interesting that um, the women were giving birth. It should be a feminine form, but maybe it's referring back to the, uh, the whatever beings they were that took the daughters of men and were born to them, lahem to them. So we have uh, completed hey, vav, yud, bet, lamed, five of the 11 letters that are used as prefixes and suffixes uh, on their own. And next time, we'll go on to another letter. We have plenty more to do. In the meantime, tasimata'inayim al-hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.